Hello, everyone. <laughs> I want you to turn to the person next to you and say the name of your favorite female scientist. <laughs> now, did you find one? Good. I asked the same question to Sarah Starks, a senior here at the University of Oklahoma studying biomedical engineering, and this was her response. Me. <laughs> now, I looked at her with a sense of surprise and admiration because she had just told me that her favorite female scientist was herself. Now, Sarah started to explain to me her frustration over the fact that so many female scientists rarely get credit for their work. And Sarah wants to change that. Sarah's response was bold and empowering, but it was also a gentle reminder to never downplay your success. Own it. Now, I can empathize with Sarah's frustration, and here's why. Only 17 women have been awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for their work in physics, chemistry, and medicine since Marie Curie in 1903, compared to 572 men. Today, 28% of all the world's researchers are women. Just let that sink in. There have been incredible advancements in technology thanks to women. These leaders have paved the way for modern technology as we know it today. So let's honor their legacy by making a commitment to encourage a young woman to pursue a career in STEM. Let's cultivate empowerment with technology. My name is Ashley West, and I'm passionate about connecting people with technology. Now, my journey into my career in STEM was a little bit of an unconventional one. When I started college, I wanted to be a music teacher. But my experiences along the way have helped me to be inspired to encourage, uplift, and support others who are going along on the same journey. Because I know it can be hard, but the reality is it really doesn't have to be. I grew up in Oklahoma City, and I attended a public school that was a 92% free and reduced lunch institution. And it was here that I learned real life challenges, real life problem solving. But it was also during this time that I found technology as my sense of empowerment. I love taking apart computers, learning coding basics, and fixing the unfixable. And these challenges really opened up to my eyes to the role that technology that can play in empowerment. And I owe this passion for technology to my dad. He taught me how to think outside the box and think outside of that box and continue thinking outside of that box. He taught me how to approach problem solving with creativity. And this is something that I feel like has helped me propel my career in STEM. Now, in 2011, I decided to really take that whole thinking outside the box mentality to heart. And I decided to apply at a little company you may know called Apple. Now, three months and five interviews later, yes, five, I got the job. <laughs> Thank you. Now, this was not your average job. This was a true life experience. I had the opportunity to work alongside some incredible people from diverse backgrounds, diverse, diverse cultures, and diverse interests. And these people worked alongside me, and we went through so much together. And these people are ones that I consider my second family and still talk to to this day. But along the way, I started to notice this trend of how technology can really empower those around us, especially the youth in our community. And over time, I started to realize women get excited about using technology to create. I noticed this trend of more girls participating in Hour of Code workshops. And gradually over time, I started to realize the role that technology can play in empowerment and creating your own narrative and finding your own voice. But throughout this time, this question really remained in my mind. How can I help others cultivate empowerment through technology? 
So I started to think and do some research of organizations across the state that are helping to encourage young women in STEM. And I came across this local nonprofit that started in 2016 called Oklahoma Women in Technology. And their mission is to bridge the gender gap in STEM fields. Now this organization is truly making a tangible impact across our state. They bring in over 300 high school and middle school girls in from across Oklahoma and get them hands-on experience, learning new skills, being connected to seasoned professionals, and even getting mentorship to those that need it most. And I started to realize, whenever we can encourage others to create, it drives the sense of empowerment with each other. And OK Wit has not only been transformative in the lives of many young women and women across the state, it has been transformative in my life and it's helped me overcome struggles being a woman in STEM. And OK Wit has helped me realize my full potential, which has led me to where I am today. I'm currently an emerging technologies librarian here at the University of Oklahoma, and I truly love what I get to do and that's cultivating empowerment with technology in our campus community. Now, when I first got this job in April of 2018, I was tasked with the responsibility of refreshing the makerspace in Bazal Memorial Library, Innovation at the Edge. How many of you all have been to the Edge? Awesome. What I love most about this space is that it provides access to cutting edge emerging technologies such as virtual reality, 3D printing, 3D scanning, fiber arts, and more. It's a melting pot of innovation, ideas, and collaboration. And it's available at no cost. Now, what if I told you you could learn the anatomy of your brain by physically holding it in your hand? Wouldn't you be more likely to remember each section versus reading from a two-dimensional textbook alone? Well, this is Jessica Lumry, and she did exactly that. Jessica Lumry is a senior biomedical engineering student here at the university, and she decided to take an MRI of her home, own brain and 3D print it at full scale to understand the differences between CT and MRI imaging. And she got excited about it. She got excited about learning and thinking outside the box. And it was a wonderful example of technology coming together to improve learning processes. Technology is inherently removing barriers and providing more access to technology, and students are really starting to catch on. This is Miranda Ramey. She is a senior studying sociology and nonprofit management here at the University of Oklahoma. And one day I asked Miranda, how has the technology within the edge empowered you? And her response was that it has helped her think beyond two-dimensional art forms. It has helped her be okay with learning from failure. It has helped her learn about emerging technologies and how they can impact others in the nonprofit world. And what most of all, it has helped her become more confident in herself and her abilities. This is Ellie. She is an international student here at the University of Oklahoma, and she wanted to share her experiences living abroad in the United Arab Emirates and India. She decided to do this using virtual reality and 3D printing. She got to show her favorite parts of her home country using VR to others in the group. And what I love most about this is afterwards, people started to get up and show their own home countries in virtual reality and get excited about sharing certain aspects of their cultures with each other, even though they're thousands of miles away. It was a wonderful example of technology breaking down barriers. It doesn't matter where we came from, what we believe in, and what we do, what we're studying. We all got brought together using technology. This is Angela Walker, and she is a graduate student studying oboe performance here at the university. And she wants to make music accessible to underprivileged communities by 3D printing oboe instruments. In a perfect world, Angela would love to see the ability for anyone to go to their 3D printer and 3D print an instrument at a fraction of the cost that it would take to rent or purchase an instrument. But it doesn't stop there. The Space and the technology within the space is driving the sense of community. And when we feel like we're a part of something bigger than ourselves, it starts to drive this community of practice. 
This is a local Girl Scout troop who wanted to earn their STEM badges on the edge by learning how to 3D scan each other so they could generate 3D models and 3D prints of themselves, as you see here. <laughs> they learned how to safely navigate in virtual reality using Google Earth. What was awesome about this experience is they learned that science can be cool and exciting and fun. And when they left the space, I could hear them talking to each other about how they cannot wait to learn more about science and technology. It's so important that we invest in our youth because they are the leaders of tomorrow. Now, these are all just a handful of examples of how technology is cultivating empowerment in our community. But how can we, as a society, continue to uplift and encourage young women to pursue careers in STEM? It's through early engagement. It's through uplifting others. It's through removing barriers and promotion of gender equality. There are so many incredible women doing incredible things. We must recognize them. Technology is rapidly advancing, as we all know it. We live in a very special time right now. Girls and women are key players in crafting solutions to improve lives and generate inclusive growth for all. They are the greatest untapped population to become the next generation of STEM professionals. And we must invest in their talents now. Learning is accessible. It doesn't have to be complicated. It's just a matter of getting started somewhere. So my call to action to you today, let's get started. Thank you.